What's up everybody and welcome to the 28th Java tutorial. In this video I'm going to be talking about the stack. So the stack in Java it's a list, it's a way to hold elements, a collection of elements, and it does its own collection in its own way. So how the stack works, it can be thought of, if you've ever been to a buffet, how plates are stacked on each other. And if you think about it, when you put a new plate on, it pushes the one that was the older plate underneath it. So each new thing, each new plate that you put on it, it's the, the closest to the top. And right here, LIFO, it's last in, first out. So the last thing that you put in is the first thing that comes off of it. So an easy way, if you want to remember a stack, is just think of a stack of plates at like a buffet. That's like the real world example of it. So in here, we're going to be using the stack to do a few things. So if you want to use the stack in Java, it's built in, just similar to the array list and the link list. The first thing you're going to want to do is import it. So you're, it's in the util, so import java.util.stack. And then we need to instantiate it. And similar to, to the other lists that we did, we call the stack, and then we put the data type within the angled brackets, and then this we're going to do with integer, which with a capital I. And I'll explain that in a second. So you call the stack class with your data type, and then you name your object, we'll just call it stack and then equals new stack data type and then your parentheses. All right, so the stack, when you put things on the stack, when you store things in this list, it stores it as objects. So it stores it as references to the objects. So you can't store primitive types. So what actually happens is a thing called auto-boxing and unboxing. Now, it's a little complex for the video and just for using a stack, but I'll just briefly touch it. How it works is it uses auto-boxing and it takes your primitive data type, which is like int, character, and, it, and what it does is it stores it as an integer. It stores it as an object, a reference to it, and it auto-boxes it. And then that's when you push things onto the stack stores it as an object. And then when you call things from the stack, it actually unboxes it. So it takes that object, that reference, and then turns it back into an integer. So that's kind of how the stack works. Now, let's go ahead and go over some methods that I can do. All right, so just like the other lists, we can get the size of a stack. So let's go ahead and do that. I always like to display everything to the screen and then also include what it is, just so we know what we're looking at. All right, so we call our object stack.size. And by calling its method right here, this is gonna return the size of the stack. And you'll see right now, our stack that we created is size zero. All right, so the terminology used, and th this is what the methods are called. There's push, pop, and peak, and a few more. So push, when you push things onto a stack, you can think of it as putting a plate onto the stack. So it's just pushing it onto the stack, it's adding it to it, and it adds to the top. So how to use that, you just call your object stack, and then all you do is call push, dot push, and then whatever it is you're gonna add to it. Now we're adding integers. So let's just add a few integers. All right, so we'll add one, two, three, and four. So now we pushed these four elements onto the stack. And if you think about how this would work, the first thing you would do is push one, and then you would push two, and then that two would go on top of the one, and then you're gonna put three, and that three is gonna go on top of the one and the two, 
and then you push the four, and that's going to go on top. So four is now on top, the, the top of the stack. And then when you pop things off, you can think of it similar to taking the plate, the most recent thing that you put on the stack, and you're going to take that off of the stack. So push adds to the stack, and pop pops it off the stack. So we'll, we'll pop those. So let's see. I want to display right here that we added four integers, just so we know that we did it in the console. All right, so added four integers. And we'll just display size again. Let's confirm those are added. Run it. So size was zero. We added four integers, which was these right here. And we called our size again, and now it's four. So we know there's four elements in it. All right, now let's start popping things off. Once again, I'm going to display it, system.out.println, and then let's say pop. All right, how we do that is call our object again, stack, and then we're just going to say dot pop. And let's run this. Boom. So we popped off what was on top of the stack, and we got our four which if you notice, that's the last thing that we pushed on. So that four was the last thing we pushed on, the most recent plate to the top of the stack, so when we popped it, that four came off. And when you popped something off the stack, it's the same as removing it, so it's gonna remove it. That four is no longer on the stack. And let's do that a couple more times. All right, so we'll do it two more times. Check it. Okay, so you'll see pop, then we had our four, pop, then we had our three, pop, and then we had our two. So there's only um, our one left in the stack. Let's go ahead and check the size again just to confirm that. size, run it, and you can see size is equal to 1. Okay, now our next method, our next behavior that we're going to go over is the peak. So what peak does, you can think of it as, if you're thinking of the plates, it looks at the first plate that's on the top of the stack, but it doesn't remove it. It just peaks at it. You can use this to check to see if the next element matches whatever you're looking for, or it, you know whatever it is, if you need to see what's on top of the stack, use the peak method because it doesn't remove it at that point. So system dot out, and we'll put peak. All right, stack dot peak. Same thing. You call your object dot and you use your dot operator, and then you'll start typing peak and then you'll see it appear and you can use that so if you run this there we go one so what that's saying is on top of the stack the next element if we were to pop it it's going to be one there's a one on top of the stack and just to show you what happens so let's see i guess you don't need to do it twice huh all right, so we can search the stack too. Let's go ahead and add a few more things. Let's see, so there's a one on it right now. So let's, let's add these back on. Before we search, let's add it back on so we have a few more things in there, because only one is there right now. So there was a one and then we added a two on top, and then we added a three on top of that, and now a four. So it's, if we were to pop them, it would go four, three, two, one. All right, so let's search. Let's use the search method. So in order to do that,
you call your stack start spelling out search or you could type out search the whole way but start spelling it out and you can see it right here click it search and then it wants right here if you see it says object O so it wants whatever object you're looking for if, you, if you're looking for a string or the object name or right now we're looking for an integer so all you need to put in is three so right now we're just gonna search to see if there is three and what that does is it returns at what space it is or what position it is in the stack so if you think of it like this let me bring that up you see how it says search to it, br it brings the position of where it is in the stack so we're looking for three right and if we think about the stack visually it starts right now on the top of the stack would be a four and then a three underneath it, and then a two, and then a one. So the top of the stack, its position is one, not zero, it's one. So our four is at position one, and our three is at position two. So that's why this two right here is the way it is, because it searched for three, and then it returned that position back. And let's see what happens when you search for something that it doesn't find and you'll see just like the other searches it brings back negative one which means that it's not in the list there is no five in the list all right another thing you can do is clear the stack let's check the size first we'll run that so the size is four remember we have four three two one and we're going to clear it. So how you clear it is you call your object and then you just start typing out clear and you'll see it has that method clear. Now what that does is it removes all the elements from your list. It's now going to be zero. Nothing's in it. So we'll check the size again just to confirm. Run it and you can see size is zero right here. Alright, a couple more things. Let's go over how to iterate through the stack with that enhanced for loop that we talked about. Now, the enhanced for loop, we know it goes from index 0 to the end of whatever list it is. And right now, we have a cleared list. We have a cleared stack. So let's add some stuff in it. Um, let's do it the old-fashioned way with a regular for loop. So int i equals, let's start with 1, as long as i is less than or equal to 30. And we will increment that. And we're just going to push all those values on. So stack.push, and we'll just put on i. So it'll push 1 through 30 on to um, our stack. And then let's iterate through it using the enhanced for loop. So this is the original for loop that we went over. Now let's use the enhanced one. So for, and remember, use your data type. We know that the stack has integers in it. We need our indexer and then our list. And let's just have it display i and then we'll just put spaces. All right, we'll run that. All right, so you can see it went through the entire stack and it went from one to 30. And the enhanced for loop doesn't work like the pop does because how the pop should work, it should go 30, 29, 28, right? Because if we're popping off the top, it would be like this. Because we added these first, we started with this. So this would technically be at the bottom of the stack, and this would be at the top of the stack. So how the pop works is it's going to pull off the top of the stack, similar to pulling off the plate. But how the um, iterator does, the enhanced for loop, it's just going to go from index 0 to the last one in the list. So if we want to pop off the entire stack, similar to this, but this is an iterator. It's a little bit different, the enhanced for loop. That's just going from front to back of a list. But if we want to pop off the entire stack, pull in each plate off, then we can do it a little bit different. How we can do that is using the while loop. So 
we're going to use the not operator. And if you call our stack and we use dot empty, what we can do is have it pop the stack. So if we look at this, while stack empty. So what stack dot empty does is it returns true if the stack is empty and it returns false if the stack has elements in it. So right now the, the stack would return false, right? Because it does have elements. It has 1 through 30 in it. This not operator is going to is going to oppose that. It's going to turn it the other one so it's going to be true. Because this initially it, it would say not false, which is true. So and we know that while loops only work when the conditional is true. So this means not false, which is true, but when the stack is empty, it will return what? True. Stack.empty will return true, and then this not operator will turn that into false, and then we will exit the while loop. All right, so while stack.empty, so while not stack.empty, system.out.print, and what we will do in here is just use our pop. And we will add a space just to make it look a little better. And it should be backwards now. Let's clean that up. All right. Let me bring that up. I'm sorry if you didn't see that. OK. So we can see that it popped off everything off the stack. And it's 30 all the way to 1. And remember how that worked? is while stack.empty, but it's not. You have to use the exclamation mark. So while not stack.empty, system.out.print, and then we just popped off each one. And that just emptied the entire stack. So we will just run the size right afterwards. And we can see that right here, size is equal to 0 now, because we popped everything off. And just to go over the, the enhanced for loop one more time in case you didn't see it, you can see that it's not in reverse order like the pop is. And that's because the enhanced for loop, it goes through the list, index zero to the last one, and it just iterates through each one. How the pop method works, it's built into the stack in a sort of algorithm that actually takes it from the top of the stack in reverse order. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the stack. There's a, you know, it gets more complex the more you dig into it, but that's the basics of it. And I hope that helped you understand what the stack is, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you, and have a great day.